apparently we started, so uh, let's begin. Okay, so this is Adventures in Marketing, and a bit like George Lucas, as I get older, um, I start to come up with crappier titles and give a less satisfying product, so I hope you're not expecting much from this. Um, so, where are we in so far? I'm gonna go a little bit fast at some points and slower at others, so that I can try to fit everything I'm thinking about in. Um, that's me, if you need to find me, the six characters you put into your browser. And let's talk about marketing. Lots of things been going on in marketing, sort of, um, in Perl. It's not really marketing, there's been a lot of revitalization of sites, a lot of revitalization of resources, we can start to list a few of those. So, Perl.org got a facelift, Perl FAQs have been brought up to date, Perl Foundation got a facelift, a lot of inroads have been made to organizing the content on the Perl Foundation website. It now has uh, recent and current content, so at least a couple of days or a month old, not two years old. So that's useful. Um, Enlightened Pearl Organization got a facelift as part of the Google Code in last year. I worked along with a student on that, and that was brilliant. Um, I did write all of that down, and so you can find it really easily. Just go to that article. You, you should have been all read that already, right? No, okay. So Modern Pearl Books is uh, continuing to grow, I think. I don't know, I couldn't get any um, actual figures from Chromatic, so um, I know he's released a, a, a this year's version of his book, maybe there's a next year version of his book. Uh, Jess Robinson's got a book coming out on DBIC. I'm not sure when that's supposed to be released. I thought it was around now, but I don't think she's finished. Um, and uh, Kefra said in his talk that his modern Pearl book is coming out very soon. Pearl Weekly has continued to grow at quite a pace. Um, nearly 4,000 subscribers, and that's, that's a great thing. Um, and quite a lot of work, hard work for Gabor, so you know you can help him out by pointing in at articles. He's, he's very um, accepting to taking that sort of uh, input from people. Um, Pearl News still has, isn't growing fast enough. I'm, I don't really know whether or not it, uh, people read it or not. Um, can't really get any figures from anybody about it. Pearl Foundation had an original press pack, we threw it away. We changed the press pack and made it look prettier. We changed the marketing materials and made them look prettier. We've got flyers and they all look pretty. You should all have those. And there's stickers. And then there's some articles that have been started to be writing. Chromatic is looking for more contributors to Pearl.com. There's going to be um, a few magazines coming out in English later in the year from this, this champ right down here. And in case anybody thinks that this is in some kind of competition with Brian Defoy, it's not. He's one of the writers. It's not really in competition when you're writing for the competition. That's, that's not how competition works. That would be very, very crap. And Brian's not crap at competition. So Google coding, big success last year. I hope you all went to Paul's talk. Paul's there, very big success from Paul last year. And this year, Wes can't enter as a student, so he gets to do more work. Ha 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 They're both gonna do the same again this year, I hope for us, and make it just as much a success. Paul was saying that we actually had more students than any other organization, which I didn't know. More mentors, so not more students though. Oh, interesting. We have to get more students there, more, more mentors. But that's still good. More mentors is good. And Pearl Foundation seemed to raise quite a lot of money last year. Karen will probably say a little bit more about that, possibly not too much, but it did raise more money last year. It mostly raised it for the Core 5 Maintenance Fund, which was a fund set up to help further um, sponsor Dave Mitchell's work into the Core 5, and it also helped to bring Nick Clark on board, and we raised quite a lot of money for that, so that it was able to continue going on. We asked, uh, that's all the sponsors who gave to that, and they're all groovy. We also got 100,000 euros from Booking.com, and $100,000 from Craigslist, to, just for Pill 5. So there, there is money given, now that's nice, but some non-targeted funds would be nice. Organizations often have bills that are not anything to do with Pearl. They're to do with paying for servers, paying for accountants, paying legal fees to, well, blood-sucking leeches who charge them. I mean, uh, uh, lawyers. I get the two confused. So some non-targeted funds to organizations are also useful. And the donations are welcome, even if they're small donations. Everybody's made it easier to donate now. You just go to members.enlightenpearl.org. Um, but you can also target specific funds if you want to. The people can find ways to spend your money. I'm happy to spend your money. <laughs> so where are we in 2012 then? Because what I've just said there is that we have sites that have been regenerated, and that's kind of cool. And we have more resources, and that's kind of cool. 
So what else has been doing this year? So Perl.com, Perl briefing papers, Perl FAQs, more documentation, English magazine. The wikis need to die in a fire. Um, the Perl 5 and Perl 6 wikis obviously don't work. Perl search have actually just taken theirs and they now send it to um, GitHub as GitHub pages and they generated from there. I'm not so sure that we shouldn't do the same with Perl 5 and get rid of the Perl 5, Perl 6 wikis from the links because nobody ever goes on them. I don't think anybody ever edits them. So there's really no point to them, but there maybe should be a conversation about what we replace them with. There needs to be a lot more transparency of people keep on going on about needing money. I particularly bang on about it quite a lot about needing money, but then you don't see where the money's spent. You don't see how it's spent. You don't see how much money has been raised, and you don't see how much has been spent when it's been raised. So you, you've got no clear idea, and you can't point it to anyone. So I think we need to do something about getting that out. And we also need to think about our sponsors a little more, and about who is a sponsor and a donator, and treat them a little better, really. They're really, really good to us, so maybe we actually need to treat them with it in, a, in, a, in a different way so that they can continue to stay with us and maybe get more sponsors. So I cleaned up the sponsors' pages recently, and I, I realized that there's not actually that many sponsors that you can talk about. There is actually a very limited number. Now, that's good when you raise large amounts of money from a limited number, but potentially catastrophic if any of those single take, uh, individuals are taken out. So we need a lot more of smaller sponsors as well. Um, and conti continue to grow this so that people put some impetus back into it. And we still need some more websites that need some more love. Um, Pearlmongers is getting an update very, very soon. Um, Jobs.pearl.org needs an update. Um, they threw out one design already, but um, it needs a better update. It needs to look more modern. Uh, Yapsi.org has been cleaned up but needs some more tying in of information, this is another thing I bang on about, is that we have lots of information, but it's often either not kept up to date or it's distributed to different sites. So I think there should be two big major calendars, one a Perl community calendar with everything on it, and the other one just an events calendar. And then we can pull the information by using an API to those two calendars. And that way, every site can just have an API and use a JavaScript call to actually call it, and that would be easier. So we also had a redesign of Send a Newbie and Iron Man and Presenting Pearl. But this still is all just redesign. This is all just making things pretty. This doesn't get more people into the community. It doesn't get more developers. And I've been thinking about this. And I think if you look worldwide, there's been a call for more developers in almost every community. We're not the only community who's suffering to have developers in. The communities that are not suffering to have developers in, I, I don't know which ones they are. They don't. They certainly don't sound like they exist to me. They, everybody wants them. Python want more people. Ruby want more people. There's always these jobs. And there's a limited pool of developers that people are pulling from. So we can't just keep on going, how can we get other developers in that are already developers? That's not going to be possible. It's not sustainable. So two of these ideas are aimed at giving and having more people coming into the community. And the other two are just fun things. I have an idea called Pearl Cogs. So that's a Perl learning environment. That sounds scary right from the fucking start, to be honest. Perl learning environment. Yes, I want to learn Perl! <laughs> so I base it around the ideas that you get from Scratch and Catroid, where you actually have very, very small modular programs, self-contained scripts that function on their own. They would be very small, so they're slim, they're portable. Perhaps we can have them running in things like a browser, maybe, or run them on small systems like the Raspberry Pi. Very, very slim. And Alex Schwern used a word that I liked. He, he said guardrails. And I like the idea of Perl with guardrails. Perl with a lot of things taken out so it can run very, very small. And so I thought we have a factory because a factory creates a product. A factory will have raw materials coming in, product coming out, and it has several machines inside the factory. I call them engines. Here's one of my engines. This is the Twitter engine. Essentially, something comes into the Twitter engine Username, password, you hit whether you're saving it or not, and it goes out of the Twitter engine and goes to Twitter. That would be one of our small modular blocks that fit together. Notice there's a little cog in the corner. If you hit the cog, I think you would have a second level that I'm going to call the gears level. On the gears level, you would have a flow chart trapping the logic of how that Twitter module works, which is part of your learning environment. You're showing the logical flow of a program. And if we had a little cog on that, because I don't have one because I didn't do all the graphics, we'd have the COGS level, and at the COGS level would be the Perl code. P 
Perl code would be documented so it fits with the flowchart, so you can follow how the Perl code fits to the logical flow of the flowchart that then fits inside your module, which is on the outside. So that gives us a Perl learning environment that you can aim at very young people that they can grow with. And as they carry on using it, they get more, I don't know, adventurous, intrigued. They can go to the deeper levels. So that's how it would work if it was, say, on a camera phone. You'd have a start and end module here. And essentially, when you, when you start the program, it calls the camera. You add an effect, probably image magic cut down. And then it sends it to Twitter. So I want people to come along. Next one, Perlverse. Now, we already have something like this with Dwim Perl, which is a Gabo again. Um, which uh, Gabo's Dwim Perl is, he took a version of Windows um, and Perl for Windows. I think probably Strawberry Perl. Is Gabo in the room? No? No? OK. Well, so we can talk about him, too. Excellent. Um, and he can beat me up afterwards. Um, he took a version of Perl, um, Strawberry Perl for Windows, and Padre and his favorite modules, and he packaged them together and said, right, install that, and you've got Perl for Windows. So that he could give it to people. I like that. Um, Netaport have done the same thing with a Linux install here. It's actually just Ubuntu with a Perl and a mini CPAN. It doesn't quite go towards what I want, though. I want students to be able to have a Perl desktop environment. I do not mean a desktop environment written in Perl. I am not insane. I have not lost my mind. It would be essentially a Linux version with lots of versions of Perl on it. Perls and lots of icons on our desktop. In fact, let's have all the versions of Perl on it. Let's have Perl Brew on it so that people can play around with different versions of Perl. Let's have a development environment where your favorite editor is actually open when you double click on an icon for Perl. It opens up the Perl inside your favorite editor. Let's have a server that opens up at the same time with your hello script already running. Let's have it open up a browser at the same time as well and have the latest piece of documentation that we think is the best thing they should be looking at right now when they clicked on that icon open up at the same time. Let's have CPAN in there. Um, now, before anybody starts shouting about dependencies, that's an implementation problem. <laughs> yes, we will have things that will break, but that's how you learn. You see things break. So again, we have the idea of guardrails, but we give them the ability this time to let go and take off the guardrails and to plummet to their mighty death. And perhaps they'll climb, some of them will hang on, climb back up the cliff and realize that they can fix that problem, and suddenly you've got a committer. Let's put lots of toys on there. Catalyst, Dancer, Mojalicious, Rakuda, whatever the hell you want. Just have them that when you double click on their icon, it opens up with the best, in, best possible example for them to use. I'm running in a server. And let's link them all together to the desktop menus. Get rid of all the crap that normally comes with a Linux install and just have a Perl menu with all these things below it. And let's give it away to people on a 16 or a 32 gigabyte disk. Probably 32 gigabyte, I think, by the time we've finished. And the last thing is, let's have text config files to control everything so they can change the preferences that we think are the best. And let's have them written as text files, and I don't mean JSON version of text files or YAML version of text files. I mean actually TXT to mean text, so I don't have any trouble reading it. So CPAN has a rating system. It's not really very accessible, and it's actually it's not really a rating system. It's more of a bitching system. Um, I like to call it the I-rate system. <laughs> um, and I think we can actually go a little better than this. You do need some kind of rating system. Now, Jess uh, Robinson said to me, what we need is some kind of health bar or health system. And I like infographics. I realize that a lot of you won't like infographics, but then again, you're not managers like me. I like infographics. I like it to look pretty and for me to understand it when little pretty pictures are shown to me. I don't want to read about the module. I'm not going to open the pod. I just killed somebody. I said pod. Oh, sorry. Um, so I want infographics. And I want a health bar that when you click on it, it gives me a lot of other infographics that mean something. I also want that health bar to be based on these infographics so that we can actually base the health on more than just, I think this is a pile of shit. Um, so the first thing we could take is uh, Meta CPAN has a list of modules I've liked and used. That's your first one we could use. But what other infographics could we possibly create? List of dependencies would be nice. List of systems that depend on it would be even better. Amount of development over time. Number of users committed or registered. You can add a self-add with Meta CPAN as well if you really want to. Um, there is actually a module that collects what 
um, module you're using on your system, you can get that to report back. But number of commits or development over time, how often a regular patch or bug has, fits has been applied. Length of time between patch submission and application. That's not always a bad thing, by the way. Something that's updated regularly scares the crap out of some system administrators. Which version of Perl is compliant on, if at all, or is it multiple? Are there any known issues? CPAN tester stats could be incorporated, since we've got lots of those, they would be the next big one to go for. And we could also have other modules that are like it, or other modules that the author has created. And because it's a nice little graphic and it'll probably be a PNG, you could have it so it's on the move, so it's on your phone. And you just type in the name of the module and it gives you a little health graphic that you can click on and get more stats, if you so want to. Trust me, well, most system administrators will just go, is it the best one of its type? Is it supported? How many dependencies does it have? That's all I want to know. There was supposed to be a talk here about the Internet of Things, and hacking didn't come, which is a real shame, because I would have loved to have seen the talk. There is a group, it looks different than that a bit now, but called hardware.pm. So, this man is my dealer. He got me hooked. He gave me the skinny man. He got me high, and what he got me high on was this. This is an Arduino, and they are enormous fun. I love them. They're great to play with. Raspberry Pis are also great to play with if you can get one. Now, we all know that Perl is pretty damn good at tying things together that are not supposed to be tied together or work in different ways. And I don't really want to take over the native software here because there's tons of examples for the Arduino. They're called Strat programs. They work really well. It's, they're in C++, and so let's use those because they're already there and they're already all well written up, and even somebody like me can understand them. And let's some, use some common web UI interface elements, JavaScript bits that already work. And then let's create some scripts to make them work. They're in Perl. So Robert at YAPCNA had a camera on an Arduino on a motor, he used the Arduino's program to control the motor, and then on his own other phone, he had a little tiny JavaScript rotator switch that made the camera ro rotate around. And he used Perl to make them talk to each other. And it was trivial. It was trivial for him to teach me how to do it. And a day later, I taught an 11-year-old kid how to do it. So I became not only a programmer within one day, but I became the next generation of educators. Now, that is a scary thought. We can do that. We can have lots and lots of Perl scripts to tie these things together. And if you don't think the Internet of Things is a big thing, you've really have been under a rock or something. Because it is a big thing. We have a generation of people now who get to play with really cool electronic toys that are cheap. We also have the whole of the third world buying Raspberry Pis because they're cheap. And they also don't melt in high temperatures <laughs> unless it gets really high like Frankfurt right now. And we could perhaps tie it in with some of the other projects I talked about to make it accessible to kids, because kids like to play with stuff that, got, that they can make move. And suddenly we have Pearl outside of an echo chamber. A tiny, tiny small bit of a catch is that, of course, I need people to do these things and to join the conversation. If nobody comes along, then it just stays as it is, and you all get to bitch that nothing's happening in marketing. You know, you give me no money, you give me no help, you don't join the conversation, and you say, why is nothing being done in marketing? I'll give you a big clue. <laughs> so I need you to take some of the things I've made and pass them around, take some of the ideas and pass them around, and join in the conversation. And you can get back to me. I've got now my own programming language. I got so inspired. You can now invoke me if you use that. I'm just not going to tell you where you type it in. Reba Sushi does not want to know about that. Thank you very much. Here you go. I have 50 seconds for questions. I, I don't promise to answer them. That's a brilliant idea, and it should be done. Net-a-port are doing the same, but it is the way to get another generation of developers. Go and get people on internships from universities and colleges. 
Indeed, you can also go down to a level of 15 years old in the UK. You can get a 15-year-old school leaver or near to school leaver to act as an internship. You can go to the colleges and get 16 and 17-year-olds. You don't have to stick within computer science. You can go to mathematics if you want. That's an instant one. But why not biology? <laughs> yeah, this is the only way forward. Is that we have to create our next generation. Yes. But it should be able to get you a good job, hopefully, and eventually. And it's certainly a growing and dynamic language, so well done to you. Trust me, it's hard to persuade some companies of the value of internships. Yeah. Thank you all.